Agile software development is one of the most popular yet most difficult ways to develop software because really everybody has their own flavor of doing it. Well, in this video, I'd like to share with you seven common pitfalls that I see people run into all the time that cause projects to fail. Hi, I'm Jamie, and at Healthy Software Developer, I want to help you stay calm on your software projects. I want to help you make sure that you can actually keep growing and not get stuck, and you can have a healthy work-life balance. I've been using Agile software development with teams for over 15 years, and as a consultant in the last 10 years of my career, I was often brought into big companies that had really big problems with their software development process. And so today I'd like to talk a little bit about the most common pitfalls that I've seen, and you can look for these on your projects, and if you come across these, you can try to remedy them. The first common problem I see all the time on Agile software development projects, and this is really common especially at big enterprises, is a company that's trying to use really high friction tools. And what I mean by that is when a team's first trying to do Agile of any sort, whether they're doing Scrum and they're trying to release things in sprints or iterations, or they're using something more fluid like Kanban, there's so many tools out there that can be used, development tools for the team, project managers, product managers, the ops team, to try to manage work and manage when people get things done. And oftentimes I'll come into a company to help them and I'll find they're using, let's say, Jira or some other tool. And whoever's configured that tool to help them do agile development, it's created a situation where just to record, let's say, a user story or just to mark off that somebody's done with work takes, you know, somebody 15 minutes or something like that. And if you have a tool that's really high friction like that, first of all, you're going to lose a lot of time to just using the tool. Second of all, as I've found a lot of teams, people on the team will just refuse to use the tool or they'll really hate working with it. And so your process is really only as good as the people that are going to follow it. And the other thing is I'll find that oftentimes people will just try to use every bell and whistle in their tool to do agile software development and then all this data is collected and they don't even use all that data the second failure i see all the time on agile software development projects and this is just a problem in our industry unfortunately is when people expect all the team members that are on a project to work exactly the same way I personally am pretty comfortable with writing documentation and user stories and writing my own acceptance tests and acceptance criteria, but I've found you know, on many software development teams, sometimes you'll have a person who really loves to code, but they honestly just hate the tools, they hate documentation. And there's other people that might like to do code reviews and other people that don't. And I've been on many projects where it's really mandated that you know this is the process, let's say, or the set of steps we're gonna go through that the teams agreed on, and we're gonna just expect everybody to follow that. And usually, in my experience at least, that doesn't really work very well. So one thing to look for if you're on a project that's trying to do Agile for the first time, or maybe you've been doing Agile for a while, again, Scrum, Kanban, any flavor under the sun, and people on that project aren't really working together in the same ways, you might take a look again at your software development process and think a little bit about, am I maybe being a little too rigid with the decisions that have been made? And this doesn't matter if a consultant came in and helped you, know, you decide what process steps you're doing, or it was maybe done by a lead developer or a whole team of people or a project manager, but you know, putting in place an agile development process that allows people to work differently and work at what their strengths are and not focus, you know, so much on everybody trying to basically work and follow the same steps exactly the same way, oftentimes can actually help a team be more productive. It's very counterintuitive because, you know, the way we're raised in the school system and the way a lot of corporate America and the rest of the world likes to look at it is that, you know, we need to get everybody to conform. We need to get everybody to measure things and do things the same way. But at least in my experience, that doesn't actually create a healthy team where people can really be creative and really be productive. The third thing I often see teams struggle with on agile software development projects is a really important one, but one that people forget all the time. And that's to really stop doing what isn't working. Uh, an example of this is I've actually been on teams where 
they have a daily stand-up meeting, which is really common on Scrum projects. And in that meeting, where you're supposed to ask those, ask and answer the three questions, right? Like, what did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? And are, do you have any blockers? The team is so tight already and so small. Maybe it's a three developer team that's that's using the, the daily standups that every single morning meeting is really a waste of time because maybe they're on Slack or they sit right together in a set of cubes. And so following that you know, process of, from Scrum and doing that isn't really helping that team. It's not really buying them anything. And this is just one example. So you know, I caution many people when I come into a company, try to help them. And I caution you as well, that if you're trying to adopt agile software development processes, you definitely don't have to follow by the book everything that let's say the scrum guide or some training or certification you went to says is necessary if it's not really providing value for your team stop doing it the fourth problem i see a lot on agile software development projects is when the team focuses on collecting data and analyzing it over teamwork this is really common on projects where agile software development processes have been kind of mandated by the business or managers and they're not really being driven by the engineers or the operations people or ux people people that actually do the work where the rest of the business looks at agile as a way to get more information about how efficient the software development team's working and so often that can result in the software development process how it's put together is optimized and set up just to help management make decisions and obviously it's important that management can have an idea of how progress is going and what's going on and what people are working on but if the processes are tilted too far to that direction it can actually slow the team way down and you don't even get the benefits of agile software development which is supposed to be the ability to actually change direction at any time the fifth problem i see that's really common on agile software development projects is when a team is measuring output instead of outcomes so in the 90s when people first started doing scrum and things like that a lot of people sold agile software development methods to the industry or their boss as this is a way we can get work done quicker and it was really kind of missing the point of the agile manifesto which are really you've probably i'm sure heard about them the different principles that a group of people came together and said these are the principles of agile and they're not really prescriptive they're just overarching ideas that people should follow but unfortunately there's many teams out there and i talked about this in my secret of scrum video that they will use agile methods just to try to put pressure on people to try to get them to produce as much features or as much code as possible within a short period of time but that code that's produced or those deliverables that the team is actually putting out there aren't really resulting in more money for the business or better satisfaction for the customer the sixth thing i see cause many agile software development projects fail is when a team fails to hold retrospectives and this is actually something that came from scrum but a retrospective is basically a, a meeting that a team a software development team has every once in a while where you get as many people that are involved in delivering that project together into a room and they talk about what went well and what didn't go well and some action items about what they're going to improve going forward now on a scrum team where you're let's say delivering a, a new build of your software every two weeks it's pretty easy to schedule these you can just schedule them at the end of that two week period but on a team that's doing kanban where the work is more fluid and things are just taken off a of queue and worked on immediately you need to have you know a product manager a team lead somebody that actually schedules a time where the team is regularly getting together to talk about how the project's going i find if people don't do this what ends up happening is there's usually a problem with some step in the process let's say the team is writing requirements that just aren't very good or maybe the test coverage is just too low to really be of benefit or you know somebody's really struggling let's say just with some aspect of the design or of the software development if people don't get together regularly as a group and talk about the status not just of the project of stuff getting done like you know how is everybody doing with their features is everybody getting stuff completed but just have a chance to get together and be really honest and transparent about you know what over the last two weeks we didn't do a very good job of let's say uh 
automated testing or something like that. Or, or you know what, over the last two weeks, we didn't really have help from ops enough to make sure that our releases were, were pushed out to production in a smooth way. We need to figure out a way to improve that. Without that regular rhythm of holding retrospectives, all that stuff has to happen sort of from the hip. And, and coordinating all that can be really difficult. And often, you know, when I've been in the situation where I'm just a developer on a team, whether I'm an architect or whatever, but I'm not really responsible for the project or the product, I don't really have enough time to help everybody to the level that I'd want. And if there isn't some scheduled time to hold a retrospective, the situation just never improves. And the seventh common problem I see with agile software development projects is when a team doesn't release their work regularly. So one of the key principles of the Agile Manifesto is this concept of continuously releasing value to customers. And the first few Agile projects I worked on back in, gosh, 2004, 2003, when it was still pretty new in the industry and there was not nearly as many tools, you know, I was on a team that would build software every two weeks but we would get together at the end of the two weeks in a room we'd show you know the product owner or the product manager what we'd built we'd get some feedback but then we just call it done and start working on the next two weeks of work and that work we just completed never even went out to the customer and so if you're going to actually get a return on investment and by that mean i mean the company is going to get a return on investment for the work that you do it has to actually be released to production and go out to your customers and this is really where continuous delivery came from this concept of building an automated system that'll push your changes out as a team is done with them on a regular cadence so if you're on a team that's building things and iterating and constantly marking deliverables off as complete but they're not actually getting released to users, unfortunately, you're actually delaying feedback from customers about what's going well, what could be improved, and what needs to change, which is really what's going to cause what I talked about before, positive outcomes for the project, where the, the project's making the company more money. And that's what's really going to result in the ability for you to get promoted, you know, people to get rewards and raises and everybody at the whole company to be more healthy about how they can reward people and make sure people are growing in their careers. So what are some pitfalls you've run into on agile software development projects? Leave me some comments below. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. You'll actually be notified every time I release a new video. You can also listen to this instead as a podcast on Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or iTunes. So until next time, thanks.